Hey there kids, welcome back to Sunday School. My name is Abigail and I am a teacher here at Community Christian Church of Moore Park. And today we're gonna to be talking about the story when Jesus calms the storm. We often feel afraid when we face situations that we don't understand or weren't prepared for. Today we will learn about a time when Jesus' disciples felt very afraid. What do you think scared them and how do you think they handled their fears? Jesus spent all day teaching crowds of people near the Sea of Galilee. That evening, Jesus wanted to cross over to the other side of the sea. So Jesus and his disciples left the crowds. They got into a boat and began sailing. Some of the people from the crowds followed in their own boats. While Jesus and his disciples traveled, Jesus fell asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. All of a sudden, a storm came. The wind was strong and the waves crashed into the boat. Water was coming into the boat and the disciples were afraid. Many of the disciples were fishermen. They had survived storms on the sea before, but this storm was different. It was so strong. If the water kept coming in the boat, the boat would sink. Surely they would all drown. The disciples looked to Jesus for help. But Jesus was still fast asleep at the back of the boat. He didn't seem to even notice the storm. Did Jesus care if they were about to sink into the sea? The disciples woke up Jesus. Lord, save us, they said. We are going to die. Jesus opened his eyes and saw that his friends were afraid. He got up and spoke to the wind. Then Jesus said to the sea, Silence! Be still. At the sound of Jesus' voice, the wind stopped blowing and the waves stopped crashing. Everything was calm. The disciples were safe. Jesus looked at his disciples and asked, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Did the disciples not trust Jesus to take care of them? The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus' disciples knew Jesus was a good man and a good teacher. But when Jesus calmed the wind and the waves, he showed his disciples that he is also God. God rules the sea and stills its waves. All right, kids, so we're going to see how long it takes me to stop the water, just like Jesus did in the story. So I have some water that I dyed blue here so that we can see if I can stop the water as quick as Jesus did. And if not, how many seconds did it take me to do that? So I'm going to use a yellow bowl as my boat. And if you guys are going to try this project at home, don't drop it in the water like I did because I got the boat filled with water. So then what we're going to do is we're going to then take our, um, our yellow boat and we're going to set it into the still water. And we're going to see how long it takes. Because I'm going to tell the boat to stop here in a second. But we're going to see how long it takes after the storm comes to stop the boat. So in the story, all of the waves came and it was crashing up against the boat. And the people were so afraid. They were probably like, what is going on out here? Jesus is not helping us. Jesus is not saving us. And then Jesus says, stop. But if you can tell here, my waves are still going. And we're going to test and see how many seconds it takes until the water gets back still. And Jesus, in the story that we told today, Jesus stopped it in one instant, just quickly. And all of the water stopped. And for this experiment, it took 35 seconds that is a very long time to get the waters to stop it might seem to not seem like that long to you but if you, jesus were to stop it in one second and it took 35 seconds that's a pretty long time All right, kids, after watching that video, I want you guys to think about this question. 
why do you think the disciples were afraid? Now, you have to think about it. They're in this boat and these waves are crashing up against them and they might think that they are going to die or that they might drown. But the thing is, is that they did not fully trust in Jesus to save them. Even though Jesus was asleep, they still did not fully trust and know who Jesus was because Jesus was God. He could, he could stop the storm of the waves, but yet they didn't believe that. They didn't believe in who Jesus was and what Jesus could actually do for them. And another question for you guys is how can we know that Jesus is trustworthy no matter what? And we can know that is because God wants what's good for us and what will bring to his glory. And so we can trust that and know that Jesus is good. Jesus knows what he's doing. He knows the situations that we're in. And we have to fully trust him and that he knows what he's doing. Even when there might be a storm around us and we don't know what's going on, Jesus already knows what's going on. And he has a plan to provide for you. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Charlie from Albany, Georgia asks, Why do we have bad days? Oh Charlie, we all have bad days. Uh, that is the reality of life. This is a great question that I think is, is really going to be helpful for a lot of people. So the short answer is this, we have bad days because we live in a fallen world. Um, God's design was for there to be no bad days. If you think back in creation, Genesis 1 and 2, uh, there were no bad days that were orchestrated for Adam and Eve. If you think about what awaits us in eternity, Revelation 21 and 22, there are no bad days there either. It's, it's all in between because of sin that we have bad days. And it's, it's this way. So, Sometimes I have a bad day because I'm just not walking with Christ and, and I'm sinning. And that's going to be a problem, right? And I'm going to have a hard, difficult, bad day because of my own sin. There are other days that I might be having a bad day because of the sin of others. Uh, maybe somebody's wronged me and that's hard, um, hurt my heart. Um, and so it's hard to have those kind of days. Other days, it's just the situation in life. Uh, I'm going to be sitting in a lot of traffic. That's a bad day. It's not because of maybe sin directly, it's just the reality of, of life. And so all these things can happen and, and give us hard, difficult days. But here is what we have to remember, that, that these days are temporary. God has given us this great gift called sleep, hasn't he? Think about it, you have a really hard day and then you're able to go to bed at night and it may be hard to fall asleep because those things are still replaying, but eventually you drift off to sleep. And what happens? You wake up the next day and it's a new day. It's a gift from God. It's a fresh start. You can put that bad day to end. You can put it to bed. You wake up then and you have a brand new day and say, today's going to be different. And God can bless you and you can have the, the greatest day ever right after having that bad day. So we remember that it's temporary, but also remember that even if that bad day uh, is, feels long, even if you wake up the next day and you have another bad day, here's the, the reality, here's the beautiful truth. God is with you. He's right there with you. Uh, you can turn to him. You can sigh to God and say, this is hard. And you know that God knows this because Jesus experienced bad days as well in his ministry on earth. So we have a God who loves us, we have a God who cares, a God who knows that we can go to for encouragement. We also have one another. Uh, when you're having a bad day, God has given us this gift in one another that you can go to parents or a friend or a teacher and just share and, and, and be encouraged by one another and, and be encouraged to, to hang in there, to get through it as God is with you. We have one another to love us through it as well. So here's a question for you. How can you encourage someone who is having a bad day? So, my so so Pastor Brian's question, how can you encourage someone who is having a bad day? Well, think about it. Think about it. It kind of depends on the person that you're doing it to. Maybe your mom's having a bad day. And you know, sometimes when my mom's having a bad day, sometimes what she needs is for somebody to just come in and do something for her. Whether that be cleaning the dishes or switching the laundry or just something small. 
or you can even make somebody a card. You guys can make them a card, send it in the mail if you know that they're having a bad day, or you can write a letter to your mom or dad. Sometimes just the small things can help with somebody that's having a bad day. You can go out and pick flowers. There's so many options that there are to encourage somebody when they are having a bad day. All right, kids, so for your activity bag, I want you guys to go ahead and all right guys, so for in your activity bag, the first thing you have is your coloring page of Jesus calming the storm. And on the back of that, you have a, a search and find page where you need to circle what is different in each picture. And there are a lot of things that are different in each side. The next thing that you guys have is your journaling page. And so you have the story on the front and on the inside, there is a keyword unscramble right here. So you guys are just gonna unscramble these words and see if you guys can come up with what the words are. Down here, you have all of these little boxes and they have different Bible references. You guys are gonna have to look them up in your Bible or ask your parents to help you do this part as well. And for each section, you are going to color and draw a picture of the scene that is taking place in your Bible. And our last thing is your little keychain. This um, is the story of Jesus when he walked on the water. So you guys can put this onto your keychain so that you guys will all remember this story. All right, so for your next project, you guys are going to need to take out of your bag your paper plate, your um, this your popsicle stick as well as your sail so i'm gonna move my camera all right so what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to take your popsicle stick and you guys are going to glue it first to the plate so let's see if i can get this glue to come out really quick or it might not come out at all it's taking a long time to get this glue to come out. Oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna draw a little line on my popsicle stick. And then I'm gonna press it down on the back. But when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you still have part of the stick sticking up because that's going to be your sail. So you wanna make sure that it still stays up. And then for your sail, my sail might be a little bit smaller than your guys' is because I just had to cut it out right now. But when doing your sail, you wanna make sure that you do it on the white side. And I'm just going to glue it down kind of like this. My goodness, this glue takes a long time to come out. There we go. Then I'm gonna make sure that my sail gets stuck on there good. And perfect. Look at how great it turned out. You guys can also color this white part if you guys would like to. I didn't do that today, but you guys are able to color this white part before you do it if you guys would like, before you glue it though. Don't do it after you glue it because then it'll be harder to color. All right, kids, I forgot to mention this about your boat because I don't have it with me right now. But on your boat, there is a little thing. It looks kind of like this. I'll put a picture up here that is also supposed to go and you're supposed to glue it onto your boat so that you can remember today's story today. All right, kids, we are going to be watching a video from somebody here in the United States who is helping out a mission. And these are kids that are helping out donate money to this mission. So let's just go ahead and watch this next clip. Let me tell you a story about a church, an ordinary church doing extraordinary things because of an amazing God, the one true God. This church, Old Town Baptist in North Carolina, adopted a people group in Southeast Asia called the Tea People. Many of the Tea People don't know about the one true God or the hope of knowing his son Jesus. The people at Old Town Baptist Church know God wants everyone everywhere to hear this good news. 
so they travel all the way to Southeast Asia. They work with local Christians, telling the tea people about Jesus. Not all of the tea people live in easy to reach places. Motorcycles can be the easiest and fastest way to get to some villages, and reaching these villages with the gospel takes the same kind of wheels. The kids at Old Town Baptist wanted to help local Christians tell more tea people about Jesus. So they took up a missions offering. And so our children gave uh, about half the cost, about $1,000, uh, toward the cost of that motorcycle. And so our kids were really a big part of uh, helping our two young men get to the places they needed to go to share the gospel. The two men often ride their motorcycle over to a local motorcycle repair shop where a new believer in Jesus works and lives. They teach him from the Bible and help him to learn more about Jesus. On a recent trip, they found that he was even telling others about Jesus, like with one man who used to be a Buddhist leader. Buddhism is a religion many people in Southeast Asia follow. Buddhists don't hear about Jesus and his love for them, so these men invited him to church. He brought me to the church, and then I come to know Jesus as my Savior and eternal God. So, this former Buddhist leader in Southeast Asia got to learn about Jesus because of a motorcycle. That is crazy cool. Ordinary Christians doing extraordinary things because of an amazing God. God uses the prayers and the gifts of Christians to do all kinds of cool things. By giving to your church's global missions offering, you can help support Southern Baptist missionaries all over the world. It provides things like Bibles, tools, and the right wheels to get the job done so that more people groups like the Tea People will hear a good news story. A story about Jesus. The End. Isn't it amazing what Old Town Baptist Church is doing? It is our job to be going and sharing the message of the gospel with as many people as possible. You guys can do that in so many different ways, whether that be talking to a neighbor or a family member or a friend, or even just sharing this video with friends of yours that might not be believers. So we can do this in many small ways. It doesn't mean that we have to, you know, go across the whole entire world. We can donate to organizations that help share the gospel. There are so many ways that we can help share the gospel. We just have to look for ways that we can do them. All right, kids, I hope that you guys have a great week, and I hope to see you guys next week at Sunday School. Bye, kids.